Good evening to all my friends in Pakistan. What an honor it is to be able to speak to you this evening and to share with you the goodness, the mercies, and the grace, and the love of God our Father. I understand you're having a healing uh, conference and that, that there's such a, a ministry of healing that's going on in, in Restoration Christian Fellowship there in Pakistan. Your pastor, uh, Brother Laquat, he is such an amazing man and always sending me messages and encourage me and, and such, a, such a privilege to be associated with you guys. I want to share something uh, in the in the short amount of time that I have in all of our church here in the United States in Warrior, Alabama, Restoration Christian Fellowship. They send their greetings to you and let you know that they're praying earnestly for you, and we appreciate your prayers for us as well. Healing is a, is a topic that is so misunderstood around so many people, but I want to read a story from the Word of God from the book of John chapter 4, The Healing of the Nobleman's Son. So Jesus came again to Cana of Galilee, where he had made the water wine. And there was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum. When he heard that Jesus had come out of Judea into Galilee, he went to him and implored him to come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. Then Jesus said to him, Unless you people see signs and wonders, you will by no means believe. The nobleman said to him, Sir, come down before my child dies. Jesus said to him, Go your way, your son lives. So the man believed the word that Jesus spoke to him, and he went his way. And as he was now going down, his servants met him and told him, saying, Your son lives. Then he inquired of them the hour when he got better. And they said to him, Yesterday, at the seventh hour, the fever left him. So the father knew that it was at the same hour in which Jesus said to him, your son lives, and he himself believed, and his whole household. Father, I thank you for the opportunity to minister your word. I pray now that you will minister this word to these people, our dear friends in Pakistan. I pray tonight, Lord, for every soul that is unsaved to come to know you as Lord and Savior, and for every person who is in need of a healing touch in their body to be healed of all manner of disease, Lord. I pray tonight that they will receive their healing. And it, Father, we thank you for the miraculous signs and wonders that are going to come out of this meeting. And we give you glory, honor, and praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen. You see, all Jesus asked that nobleman to do was just believe. And the nobleman said, you speak it, I believe it. We've got to get to the place in our Christian walk that whatever God said, we believe it. So in the when it comes to healing, we have to understand, is it God's will to heal? Does God want to heal us? Well, we know that it's God's will for everyone to be saved because the Word of God says to us, it is my will that none should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So we don't ever question if it's God's will for someone to be saved. But we always seem to want to question, is it God's will for someone to be healed? But what we need to understand is even we, we find in, in the Lord's Prayer, he said, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, his will, on earth as it is in heaven. And we know that in heaven, there's no sickness, there's no crying, there's none of that. And so God's will is for that same uh, atmosphere to exist in our Christian walk here on this life. You see, heaven is, is what we're looking for, but heaven is not the reward. Heaven is our eternal resting place. Your reward is Jesus Christ. Your reward is walking with Jesus in newness of life. Your reward is being recreated in the image and likeness of God, walking in divine health and healing. So whatever it is tonight that you may be dealing with, whatever sickness may have come your way, no matter what it is tonight, you're walking with Jesus. You are with him, seated with him in heavenly places. And you just, the healing has already been paid for. Isaiah 53, 5 says he was wounded for our transgressions. By his stripes, we are healed. First Peter 2, 24 says we were healed. And so we believe that the healing was, was paid for on the cross, just like salvation was. And then the Pharisees said, well, well, how can you, how can you forgive if our, give us our sins? And Jesus said, which is easier for me to say? I forgive you your sins or take up your bed and walk. Both both seem almost impossible to the to the natural eye and the natural mind, but in faith they are both very very possible. 
So we find that, that healing becomes something of a controversial subject among so many Christians around the world, but I don't believe it's controversial for you folks in Pakistan. I believe that you already have faith to believe, and that faith has been stirred up. The gift of God has been stirred up in you by the laying on of hands, and tonight you're going to lift your hands and you're going to say, Father, I receive my healing right now in the name of Jesus. I receive it, I receive it, and I'm going to walk in it, and I'm going to declare it. Now, here's some things I want to I want to share with you. The Word of God is seed, and you know the parable of the sower. The Word of God is seed, and and so you, you plant this Word, the good Word, and what are some words that we plant? What are some things that we do? Well, I've already quoted Isaiah 53, 5 and 1 Peter 2, 24, but what are some other things that you may want to, to put and let it germinate in your heart and begin to proclaim that on a daily basis every day when you wake up? God's mercies are new every morning. Every day, the Word of God says that we we uh, we can call those things that aren't as though they were. So we declare, "I'm healed." We don't we don't deny symptoms, but we declare we're healed because it's already been purchased. We find Mark eleven twenty four. I can say unto this mountain, "Be thou removed and be cast into the yonder sea." And whatsoever I believe. Whatever I say that I believe, I, I believe when I say it, I can have it. And so we know that we're also snared by the words of our mouth. So we begin to speak the word. We begin to speak what the Bible says, not what man says, not what a doctor says, not what even a symptom says, but we begin to speak what the word of God says, that this is my body. This is mine. This is something that, that God has given me. This is the temple of the Holy Spirit. It dwells in me. The Holy Spirit dwells and lives in me. And I'm, this temple is going to be clean and going to be whole and going to be pure. And God is going to bring healing to this temple as long as I walk on this earth. And so we begin to let that seed dwell in our hearts. And every day we get up and say, I'm healed by the blood of Jesus. I'm saved by the blood of Jesus. I'm, I'm baptizing the Holy Ghost with evidence of speaking in other tongues. I, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I come against all sickness and disease. I declare that it must be gone in the name of Jesus. Jesus, you speak the word. You've already spoken the word. I speak the word. And when we speak the word, then the disease has to leave. When we speak the word, demons have to obey us. When we speak the word, all, all sickness has to flee because sickness is not from God. Sickness is from the enemy. John 10.10 10 says, For, for uh, I've come to give you life and to give you life more abundantly, but the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And I'm telling you that sickness comes from the devil. And so you can rebuke sickness and it has to flee because Luke 10.19 says, I give you authority over all the power of the enemy. And it's the enemy that brings sickness. It's not God. God, God doesn't want you sick. God doesn't want me sick. An earthly father would never put sickness on his child, not even to teach him a lesson. A lot of people think, oh, God's trying to teach me a lesson. I've got this sickness because God wants me to have it. You need to rebuke that right now. In the name of Jesus, you need to rebuke those kind of thinking. You need to think that thought, rebuke that thought process. And you need to declare that this, this sickness is not from God, it is from the devil. <clears throat> and anything from the devil, I don't have to receive. I don't have to receive what Satan has put my way. I don't have to take it. I have authority over all his power. And so I come against it in Jesus' name. I come against it. I'll share with you a personal experience. In the October 2000, on October 1st, I was 44 years old. I'm now 65, so it's 21 years ago. I had a heart attack. I was in the hospital, and I was dying, and I was praying, and I knew that I was at the point of death, and uh, doctors were doing all kinds of things, but it wasn't helping, and God spoke to me, and I heard an audible voice of God, and he said this. He said, you shall live and not die, that you may proclaim my glorious works. And at that very minute, all fear left. And they were able to, to put a shot, uh, a clot-busting drug that, that opened up the arteries in my, in my heart and allowed the blood to flow. They were the only hospital in all the southeastern United States that had that medicine. But God told me that I would live and not die, that I would proclaim his glorious works. And there was a time when I would say, when I had my heart attack, well, see, I've quit claiming that heart attack is mine because that heart, heart attack came from the devil. That's his heart attack. Your sickness 
your disease is not yours. You are not identified by a sickness or by a disease. You are identified by your love for Jesus Christ and your born again experience of knowing that Jesus lives within you. That's your identity. Don't ever let anybody identify you by a disease or sickness or social standing in life. Whether you're in Pakistan, the United States of America, Korea, North Korea, it doesn't matter where you are. We're identified because of our love and because of who Jesus is in us, not for any other reason. And so I can personally attest to the fact that Jesus heals. He healed me. And a heart doesn't repair itself. But doctors have told me that they cannot even tell I've ever had a heart attack. And so that's because Jesus is the healer. Jesus is the healer. And you can say unto this disease, I rebuke you in Jesus' name and I command you to drive, whether it's a, a broken bone, whether it's a, a, a cut, whether it's a disease of some kind, no matter what kind of disease it might be, it's straight from the pits of hell and it's not from God and it doesn't belong to you, so don't carry it around. It's not mine, I don't want it. It's not mine, I don't want it. It's not yours, you don't want it. That sickness is not yours, you don't want it. I don't want it. Give it back to the devil. He wants it. He's the one that sent it. It's his. So give it back to him. Send all sickness and disease and all this stuff right back to the enemy because that's exactly where it came from and we refuse. So as you begin to, to put these words in your heart and whose report are you going to believe? Are you going to re re believe the report of the Lord that says, I am healed by the blood of Jesus? Or are you going to re believe a report of some doctor somewhere that says, you've got this disease, this disease, and this disease? Now, that doctor is speaking factually, but what you understand is, see, God can change facts. Now, truth doesn't ever change, but God can change facts because he can change your situation. He can change it into something more like what he wants you to be. So I encourage you tonight. I encourage you tonight in this prayer conference, in this healing conference. Lift your hands up to the Lord. Lift your holy hands up and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I send this disease right back to the pits of hell from which it came because I don't want it. It doesn't belong to me. I believe that healing is the Father's bread and I receive healing into my body right now. I receive it over my mind. I will not lose my mind. I will have a sound mind. I will have a purified body. I will walk in the Spirit and my my mind will be renewed in the name of Jesus Christ, and I will walk in your healing, your healing power, and I will share this testimony with everyone that I see, and people's lives will be changed by the power of the testimony that I have, the word of my testimony, and the power of the blood. I will find it. So I'm planting seeds in my heart, and these seeds, that my heart is good soil, and that seed is going to grow, and healing is going to grow, my faith is going to grow, and I'm going to declare things things. And I declare today that I'm healed in the name of Jesus. Proverbs 4.22 says, God's word is life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. God's word is life to all who find them and health to all their flesh. Hang on to God's word. Plant it within your heart. Plant it within your heart. There's three things that I want you to do. I want you to give an attentive ear to God. Listen to God. Listen to God, not the devil. Listen to God, not the devil. Then we find there's a, there, the second thing. There, You've got to have a steadfast look, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. Look at Jesus, not your circumstances. Look at Jesus, not your sickness. Look at Jesus, not your disease. Look at Jesus, not your problem. Look at Jesus. So not only... Not only do we listen to what God is saying and listen to his report, then we look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, and then we keep all this in our heart. We keep it all in the midst of our heart because your heart is the soil where the seed is planted. So let me encourage you tonight that my friends there in Pakistan, let me encourage you, hide the word of God. Listen to God. Listen to God. Listen to what his word says. Listen to what his word says. And then I ask you, by all means, keep all this in the midst of your heart and look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. Look at him tonight. Don't look at me. Don't look at the pastor. Look to Jesus. Father, I speak healing over my friends right now. I declare right now that healing is their bread. And tonight, healings will break out all over this church in this service People's lives are going to be touched and changed forever. 
And I thank you, I praise you, and I honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for the opportunity. Have a blessed evening. I'm looking for great reports from RCF Pakistan. Be blessed.